It's gone. Yes, son. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Ali, for introduction, and uh, I proceed to my talk, in which I describe a quantitative quantitative approach to the diffusive dynam dynamics through the first passage statistics, uh, as has recently been explored by a few authors, including uh, us. I believe that um, everyone is uh, familiar with the phenomenon of diffusion in its chemically pure uh, form. Uh, we can fancy what happens with a droplet of ink immersed in a glass of water. Uh, the substance with time will spread over the whole volume available to the liquid. How fast this process uh, goes is determined by the diffusion coefficient, which in this case uh, we, use, we would call the diffusion constant. In a more general setting, however, we may need uh, to consider inhomogeneous diffusion uh, with the space-dependent diffusion coefficient d and chemical potential u. This situation applies to many problems of biophysical interest in which the diffusion takes place in uh, aqueous solution, uh, solutions near organic surfaces such as proteins. To name just a couple of such systems, I can mention the permeation of ions through a cell membrane or the absorption of, um, of carbon dioxide uh, by plants and bacteria during the process of photosynthesis. To model the inhomogeneous diffusion, we used the Smoluchowski equation, uh, or sometimes this equation is also called the Fokker-Planck equation. Uh, this equation, this diffusion equation, relates the evolution of the probability density P F of finding a molecule at the given space uh, point in, uh, in space, or uh, in macroscopic terms, the concentration of the substance, to the divergence of uh, the matter flow caused by uh, gradients of the potential U and by the gradient of uh, the concentration itself, P. A problem uh, that often emerges uh, in studies of biophysical systems is how can we measure uh, D and U simultaneously? In principle, uh, many of you know that uh, U could be inferred by taking the logarithm of the concentration P, uh, thus the determination of D usually poses the main issue. In the rest of my talk, I will focus uh, on the transverse diffusion that is in the direction perpendicular to the surface. This problem is both uh, more difficult and more relevant for the studies of the permeation and absorption processes that I have just mentioned. Let me choose the coordinate uh, set along the direction perpendicular to the surface as uh, in this sketch. Here I use the over dot uh, in, to simplify the uh, diffusion equation. The over dot uh, uh, denotes the time derivative, and the prime uh, denotes the uh, derivative with respect to the coordinate z. Uh, to quantify our observation, uh, observations uh, of a diffusion process, we adopt the first passage statistics as follows. Take uh, a population of molecules in a narrow bean, and observe how each molecule diffuses until it passes uh, through a given distance, capital L, in any direction for the first time. Hence, the, hence comes the name, the first passage. Then, a fraction of the whole population of molecules will uh, travel to the uh, positive direction of Z, to the right here, and the other, whereas the other uh, fraction uh, in the opposite direction, in the negative. Thus, we can determine the probability of the positive and negative first passage events, uh, P plus and minus, uh, respectively, that must sum up to one. In addition, we can measure the time of each uh, first passage event and calculate the mean first passage time, the average of all these observations tau. 
First passage, uh, yes, and um, uh, the probabilities of the positive and negative uh, events characterizes the preferred direction of diffusion, whereas uh, the mean first passage time tau characterizes the speed of the diffusion. To describe uh, the spatial variation of the first passage statistics, we apply the same procedure uh, by varying the position of the molecule's initial populations as we do when constructing uh, histograms of uh, the probability density. Now, to relate the first passage statistics to the space-dependent potential and diffusion coefficient, uh, we need a little bit of theory. Uh, we transform this Molokovsky equation by introducing what we like to call a dual potential epsilon. Uh, the green equation relates epsilon to the uh, uh, external potential u and uh, the logarithm of the diffusion coefficient. So by substituting epsilon instead of uh, u, the, the dual potential instead of the uh, external potential u, uh, we transform uh, the original equation in an entirely equivalent form. Um, that this, in this form, we observe that we pick up a third uh, full, uh, matter flow term, which is proportional to uh, the gradient of the diffusion. Uh, I want really to emphasize that equations one and two are entirely equivalent because uh, the second equation uh, has been featured several times in the literature as an alternative model of the diffusion equation, though it is not as established through uh, this simple substitution rule uh, highlighted in the green color. The dual potential is very convenient when solving the first passage problem for the Smolokovsky equation. A uh, formal solution of this problem is well known, and using a uh, few approximations in the uh, limit that we observe uh, very uh, first passage when events with a uh, very small first passage distance L, we can derive uh, the following formulas uh, to relate the slope of the effect of the dual potential epsilon uh, to the log ratio of the uh, first passage probabilities p plus and p minus. And then using just the mean first, uh, mean first passage time tau, we can also find uh, the diffusion coefficient. In addition, uh, using numerical integration techniques, we in principle can infer the chemical potential u from the dual potential and the diffusion coefficients, uh, coefficient thus found. Today, I will not, however, report examples of this approach. All right, now from the theory to practice, let me give you an example of the potential uh, and the space-dependent diffusivity curves reconstructed uh, from our molecular dynamic simulations. In this example, I report our results for the diffusion of water molecules near a surface of a glutamine crystal. As the coordinate Z, uh, we use uh, the distance to the Gibbs dividing interface that delimits the protein weighting layer from uh, the rest of the liquid uh, water in this instance. Uh, you can see that um, at nanometer uh, lengths away from the Gibbs dividing interface, in the, uh, we uh, recover uh, the diffusivity of the bulk water, the purple curve here with diamonds, uh, and the diffusivity of the bulk water in the simulation conditions uh, is about four nanometers squared per nanosecond. Close to the protein surface, the diffusion of water molecules slows down and uh, near the gibbs dividing interface, it is uh, by, by an order of magnitude slower than in the bulk liquid. The chemical potential reconstructed here from the uh, log, by the, using the logarithm of the steady state density shows that uh, the hydrophobic surface of the protein expels water uh, as manifested by the growth of the uh, chemical potential, the external potential in this case, uh, near and uh, beyond the Gibbs dividing interface. Our estimates uh, can be validated independently uh, through stochastic simulations of the Langevin dynamics. 
using the inferred potential and the diffusion coefficient, we can construct a model of a Brownian particle whose phase space probability evolves according to the same diffusion equation that we have uh, been discussing so far. In the slide, I report the mean first passage time uh, of two launcher dynamic simulations along with, the, with our regional molecular dynamics data. The orange curve, which uh, uses the, uh, the external potential and the diffusion coefficient inferred from the molecular dynamics data, matches very well uh, the original data uh, that we try to reproduce. However, uh, in this second case uh, of Langer dynamics, we set the diffusion uh, coefficient to the bulk value. So in this simulation, the diffusion coefficient was constant fixed to the bulk value of diffusivity of water. And you can see that uh, close uh, to the uh, surface of the uh, protein, uh, this model cannot reproduce the slow uh, the slowdown of the uh, dynamics, uh, of the diffusive dynamics. Uh, this result actually gives uh, further credence to the uh, inhomogeneous diffusion framework uh, to describe uh, um, the dynamics of molecules uh, in these uh, complex environments. And uh, finally, before concluding, let me uh, say thanks to all the uh, members of our team working on these problems. And uh, I would like to advertise a recent paper published in Soft Matter, from which I took uh, uh, the examples reported in my talk. Uh, here I finish. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh for the very interesting talk. We have one more talk left and time for questions, I believe. Yeah, we have time for one question. Yeah. Roman, how did you measure the diffusivity by molecular dynamics? I mean, the, the profile you showed. Yes, uh, so uh, we measure statistics uh, for a population of uh, molecules starting at a given coordinate. That way we obtain uh, diffusivity at a given point. Then we uh, take uh, repeat the same uh, procedure, uh, but taking population of the water molecules at a different coordinate. So we obtain uh, values of uh, diffusivity at various initial conditions z. Then we use, uh, in our case, we use spectral uh, methods, uh, numerical techniques to reconstruct the interpolating curve. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you very much. Uh, there is one question more, if I... One question, Ali, okay, sure, we can handle yeah. that. Uh, uh, Roman, so uh, regarding your uh, way to infer the U of Z, the numerical yes. estimate, Okay. Uh, does it work well for the glutamine surfaces? Uh, we have not tested this for the glutamine you haven't tested surfaces. It yet. Okay. It would be interesting to see if it, how good or bad it is. Oh well, yeah. We we could test it, of course. Uh, I mean, not only yeah. on the glutamine surfaces. <laughs> I don't know, but that's 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 the work that's there. You have the data that's published, so I mean, you, we we know what the real U of Z is in some sense. There, so. Yeah, anyway, we'll argue later. Okay. Well, uh, 